We have big solar flares, a big radiation storm, and we may get clipped by a partially Earth-directed solar storm. Those are the stories in this week's Spotlight. Space weather this week picks up in a big way. As we take a look at our Earth-facing disk, we have two big flare players in Earth view. The first is region 3575, and we have region 3576. Now, we thought region 3576 might be the taking center stage because it was firing solar storms and solar flares before it even rotated into Earth view, and it was the larger cluster. However, region 3575, as it started to rotate to the sun's west limb, started growing growing quite quickly. And sure enough, by the 6th, it launches a big M-class flare. Boom! Right there! That was the first big one. This was a mid-M-class flare at almost an R2-level radio blackout. And then about a day later, it fires yet another M-class flare. Boom! Right there! You see that? That both times it launched solar storms, but neither of these solar storms were headed toward Earth. They were going southwest of Earth, so we're not going to get impacted by that. But not to be outdone, Region 3576 then fires an M-class flare right about here. I'm trying to wait for it. Bam! Right there. That's an M-class flare. It was a low-level M-class flare. We also had a little bit of a filament eruption there. And if you watch right in this region, you'll see another poof. And that was another filament that launched that we think is actually going to be partially Earth-directed. And it may clip us just a little bit to the south. You'll see it right here. Wait for whoosh, right there. You see that kind of dimming, that little bit of puff that comes out like that? Well, that's the solar storm that may actually hit us sometime around the 12th, but we're not expecting anything other than maybe a little uh, touch of, of disturbance at high latitudes. Anyway, back to region 3575, it was not going to be outdone because just shortly after that solar storm launched, BAM! Right there it fired yet another M-class flare, and it still wasn't done. This region is rotating to the sun's west limb, and now rotating behind the sun's west limb, and wait for it. BAM! Right there! How many BAMs do I have to say? This is the X3.38-class flare. Now this flare, believe it or not, as impressive as it was, we didn't even see all of it. So this was actually a bigger flare than we even got to see in Earth view. Thank goodness for that, because as we take a look at our DRAP uh, model, this is the model showing how the ionosphere, how the upper atmosphere ends up being kind of trashed, really, by this the intensity of this solar flare. You actually see, wham, right there. That's the X3.38. And you can see the radio contacts. You'll actually see them. They're all disappeared right now, but you'll see them start coming back. In fact, as this solar flare started waning, it took a while for the amateur radio contacts to kind of repopulate. So this is causing a big, caused a big issue for uh, amateur radio operators on the day side of Earth, which was, you know, at, at the time of this flare, which was basically across the Atlantic. On top of that, we started getting an S2 uh, level radiation storm. That's the level that it's at right now. In fact, it's continuing to climb as of this posting. So we're going to be having to watch, watch this and deal with it over the next maybe two or three days before things begin to calm down. And so aviators, definitely be sure to check those ICAO advisories often because these uh, polar cap absorption events, these things actually end up causing issues not only for GPS navigation, but also HF radio communications, especially over the poles. And likely big flares are still going to be on the menu, despite the fact that this region is now rotating to the sun's far side, because region 3576 is beginning to show evidence of growth again. As we pull up the magnetic complexity here, you can see the region early on. This is the last 48 hours of this region. You can see it actually was having a lot of activity in the main part of the spot right here. And this is what was calling causing the smaller M-class flares as it rotated into view and kind of as it moved to center disk. But watch up here in this region, you'll see a lot of blue beginning to develop over the last 48 hours. And you start seeing a bit more flare activity. Watch it growing right up in here. See this? 
and whoop, whoop, boom, boom, look at that. See all that little activity there? That's what we're worried about. That's what's actually part of the, the new growth that we're seeing of, of this region as it's crossed now Central Meridian. And that means it may do exactly what Region 3575 did, which is grow quite rapidly as it rotates to the sun's west limb. So we will watch that because if so, this thing is not out of the running yet to be a big X-class flare player. And just as we began to talk about Region 3576 getting more active, it actually happened. In fact, it's due to this region right here, Region 3584. Before this region was even in Earth view, it's been firing off solar storms and solar flares. And sure enough, as it continues rotating, you see at the beginning of the 10th, bam, right there, it fires off an M3.4 flare. And it looks like it triggered region 3576 because just a few hours later, look at this, wham, right there. It gets a near M-class flare and is all back up. And you take a look at these regions in here, you will see there's actually several dimming regions that grow right there and right there. Now, these dimming regions mean that there's an Earth-directed solar storm. So we are watching region 3576 very carefully because this region is likely going to continue to be more active as it rotates to the sun's west limb. And we have region 3584 also as a big flare player. Now, taking a closer look at that solar storm that's on its way to Earth, we switch to our solar storm prediction model, Enlil. Now, this is NOAA's version of the model. The top panel's density, the bottom panel's velocity, and you're looking down at the sun from the North Pole with Earth being off to the right. And as we set this solar storm model in motion, you can see those solar storms coming out. First, we have one that was launched back on the 8th and it's moving very, very slowly, but it definitely could have a, a partially Earth-directed component. And then you see that second solar storm. This is the faster one that was launched on the 10th. In fact, you can see them actually merging together there. And the impact looks like it's going to be late on the 12th, likely into the 13th. And NOAA has this actually being a pretty decent size impact, but not expecting all that much because the speeds of these structures are quite slow. So expect to have some impact right around the 13th. And this is great for war photographers, especially at high latitudes, but we might see a little bit of something into the 14th before things calm down. It's kind of hard to say, but it sure makes for a nice Valentine's Day. Switching to our moon, we are now passing through the new moon phase on our way to a first quarter. And by the 14th, the moon will be about 27% illuminated. So you night sky watchers, if you want to catch those dim objects in the sky, this is a good time to get close to someone you love. Now, switching to our solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are anticipating the hits from those solar storms that were launched on the 8th and on the 10th. In fact, at high latitudes, NOAA is expecting minor storm conditions, possibly starting around the 12th, likely going to be more into the 13th, however. In fact, NOAA is giving us about a 45% chance of a major storm, and this will easily continue in through the 13th and possibly be calming down by the 14th. But by the 15th, we're going to be back to mostly calm conditions. But with those new flare players in view, these this uh, forecast could change at any moment. So Aurora photographers, if you're at high latitudes, get ready for a bit of a show. Now at mid latitudes, well, we're still expecting mainly unsettled conditions. But by the 13th, we could possibly see active conditions with possibly about a 45% chance of a minor storm. But again, this should settle down by the 14th and then into the 15th. Again, Aurora photographers, stay on your toes because with these big flare players in Earth view, they could be launching solar storms at any time. So this this uh, forecast could definitely change. Now, switching to our solar flare and dayside radio blackout outlook over the coming week, we are dealing with quite a few active regions in Earth view, including those big X flare players. And there may even be another one that's going to be rotating into Earth view here over the next three or four days. We are sitting in well into the triple digits. In fact, we will probably climb a little bit as we move through the five day when it comes to solar flux. And that means radio propagation on Earth's day side is doing very well. However, it's going to be noisy because of those big flare players. In fact, NOAA is expecting moderate noise and up to about a 60% chance of M-class flares at an R1 
to R2 level radio blackout, and even a 25% chance of X-class flares here over the next day or two, then we settle down just a little bit. I'm still thinking we're going to be sitting around 15% chance of X-class flares right around the 12th, and we can actually even see that climb as we move in through the end of this week, and that's because of the new regions that are going to be rotating into Earth view here over the next couple days. And we are definitely going to be paying attention to region 3576 as it rotates to the sun's west limb. So uh, amateur radio operators and emergency responders expect radio blackouts to be on the menu. And GPS users definitely stay vigilant, especially near dawn and near dusk. And now switching to your radiation storm and polar aviation outlook over the coming week. We are having a S2 level radiation storm right now. This means we are sitting at the D2 minor range. In fact, we're at the higher end of the D2 minor range with this S2 level storm. Uh, and this is actually going to continue easily over the next few days. We'll slowly begin to diminish. Uh, and this is at flight level 360. By the 11th, we're expected to be in the S1 range. And that might even continue through the 12th but and, and into the 13th before we drop down below the S1 range. In fact, NOAA is expecting that we'll be definitely in the in the S1 to S2 range uh, over the next few days and even up to about a 25% chance of still being at the S1 range by the time we reach the 12th. So uh, aviators, and this does include flight crew uh, and high-risk passengers, definitely take this into your flight plans when it comes to radiation dose. You're going to get a little bit of one, especially if you're flying at high altitudes and high latitudes uh, and long intercontinental flights. So definitely take this into into your plans, as well as pay attention to those ICAO advisories because they're going to let you know what the space weather conditions are on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. So the space weather this week is getting very exciting. Not only do we have big flare players in Earth view, we had region 3575 give us that big X flare, and now we have region 3576 and a new region 3584 joining the fray. So this means amateur radio operators and emergency responders, you're going to be dealing with big radio blackouts on Earth's day side easily through this week and possibly in through next week before things calm down. So just kind of grin and, and bear with it. Now, uh, we also have several solar storms uh, on their way to Earth, and these solar storms should be hitting us around maybe late on the 12th into the 13th. Aurora photographers at high latitudes, you'll definitely get a good show. War photographers at mid latitudes, you might even get a good show as well right around the 13th, so keep those battery charged. And now also you GPS users, well, things aren't looking all that great for you right now. You're going to have to stay vigilant near dawn and dusk, especially with these big radio blackouts that are occurring on Earth's day side. But then when the solar storm hits on the 12th and 13th, you're also going to have issues with GPS reception on Earth's night side anywhere near Aurora. So definitely stay vigilant. And if you happen to be a UAV pilot, be sure to calibrate your magnetometers often once that solar storm hits. I'm Tamitha Scove, the Space Weather Woman. Thank you for watching.